What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba Marina. If you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, hit this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys are gonna be notified every time we upload new content. Now we get a lot of requests on some of our salvage videos and our commercial diving videos um, on how do we get started in doing it and you know what is outside the scope of our training or what is outside the scope of say of our insurance company and things like that. So I thought I would make a video showing you some things that we do that you guys don't get to see that are commercial diving related when there's actually no diving involved and I'll show you how we can do inspections from above the water surface on certain things certain intake systems or in the case of this video you're gonna see us do an inspection of a hydro station or basically a dam that holds back the water that makes up a lake I'm gonna show you how we do inspections to keep our guys safe and I'm gonna talk a little bit about what's actually outside of what we're uh, say licensed to do or insured to do uh, because we guys want you to understand that everything that we do is all about safety. Every job that we perform here on our channel that you guys see or the, even the jobs that we do that are not filmed, it's all about safety. And I'm never going to risk any of my guys' lives uh, to do a job just for the bottom dollar, or just for you know the money out of it. So in today's video, I want you to pay close attention to some of the safety protocols that we use, uh, and hopefully this will give you a better understanding of what we do here, uh, especially on the things that we don't make videos, because typically we wouldn't make a video on this because there's no there's no diving involved in it, even though we're a commercial dive team that does underwater inspections, but sometimes we even do them from the surface. So let me start this video out just giving you a background of what we're doing. This is a small little lake area uh, that is owned and operated by a local golf course and it's basically their irrigation lake. And the dam, this is the lower side of the dam that holds the lake back that you're looking at. Um, and they're flowing water through it, um, but they need to get it stopped and it will not stop. So they're needing divers to go down and figure out why the water's going through and why they can't close off the, uh, the overflow slash uh, intake system here. Uh, and of course, this is the upper side of the dam. This is where we would be diving to do an inspection if we were inspecting the wall or um, anything like that. However, we're not actually gonna be diving on this because of the, um, deadly risk of delta p or differential pressure here and since we can't get anything closed off um, we're not going to actually be sending in divers in the water we're actually going to be sending a live view camera down just to see what the problem is so the very first thing that we're going to do of course is measure the height uh, of the wall of the dam here and to do that i'm just simply taking a reel here with a weight and I'm gonna drop it down. Um, instead of using a tape or anything like that, it's a lot easier just to do this with the weight on it um, because the flow that's at the bottom, and you're gonna see very briefly here, the flow is actually n not just coming straight out, and I'll show you a picture here in a minute what I mean by this, but it's actually back feeding back into the uh, outflow system or where the water's coming you know, through the intake of the dam. Uh, you'll see there's an eddy here that allows that flow to come back in, and by having a weight uh, on this reel system or uh, on the line here, it makes it very easy for me to get it um, unstuck out of that eddy, if you will. There you can kind of see it's pulling it back into it. Um, but all I'm doing is just simply, I'm doing a very um, old school method way of measuring something. I'm just using a string, if you will, a plumb bob string type thing. And then uh, I'll lock the reel down and I'll pull the string up and actually measure it. Now this is not scientific, this doesn't have to be perfect, so you'll see that when I pull this back up that I'm simply measuring it with my yeah, arm spans. Cool. And if you know anything about underwater navigation or underwater search and recovery, one and of the I'm most the accurate right ways to measure distance underwater is with arm spans. And if your instructor didn't teach you that, basically you're just gonna extend your arms out, fingertip to fingertip is your height. If you know what your height is, then you know an you exact that? measurement. So oh, once I get nice. this pulled up, I'm basically just gonna be measuring it to the top of the, the wall or the top of the dam here. And then I'll pull the string up, I'll measure it out, and that'll give us a general idea of the height of the dam. Now, look real close before it turns away here. Notice how the water, it appears to be coming out in one corner. I'm gonna show you a quick picture here. And on this picture, you'll see it doesn't actually come straight out. The outflow system of this dam is coming out sideways and it's pushing up against the, um, the angled wall there and it's creating an eddy. And you can see that water actually churning down there 
Um, and this, this is one of the major dangers, especially diving on the lower side of the dam too for inspections, um, that we have to worry about. So it's not just Delta P from the upper side, it's also those eddies that we can get caught in or any type of strainers that would be downstream as well. But now that I've got it measured, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the string up and we're just gonna do a very rudimentary uh, way of um, measuring the line. I'm basically just gonna do arm spans. Uh, I know how tall I'm in, I am, and here you can see, based off my shadow, I'm just simply doing arm spans, and that's going to give me a pretty accurate measurement of the height. Now, once again, it doesn't have to be scientific, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just need a general idea of how tall the wall of the dam is, is here, so that's also going to give me a general idea of what the depth on the front of the dam uh, should be, too, and I will be showing you a, a picture of the front of the dam when it's drained, just to give you a better idea of all why the depth didn't measure out quite the way we thought it was going to measure out when we did it. All right, now that we've got the lower side measured, we're going to go ahead and switch up and measure the upper side of the dam. Um, and you will see very quickly, just like we had the eddy at the bottom that was pulling that string back up into the outflow system, you're going to see the string get sucked through the intake very quickly. And even with a weight on there, it literally just pulls the string right into the intake very quickly. Um, and you can imagine if it was one of us down there, you know, right in front of that intake, how quickly it would pull us in. Um, there is a screen on this intake as well that would help prevent say permanently pinning us there um, however the string itself can go through that mesh spring to where our bodies wouldn't it would literally just pin our bodies we could crawl off the, the screen but not knowing the condition of the screen we chose obviously not to put any divers in and just do um, to, to use an underwater camera system that we could lower down but basically we're just measuring it here and one of the things that we noticed is uh, it's not very deep it's not deep at all. I'm going to say it might only be about 12 foot deep to where the other side was roughly, I believe it was, you know, 50 to 60 foot deep, something of that sort. Uh, but this side is not very deep at all. And if you take a quick look at a picture again, this is a picture of the dam when it was actually drained several years ago. So the bridge that's up above this waterway system um, was getting rebuilt and they had to drain all the water to get in to do it. So, uh, but you can see it's not very deep because look at all the debris and I'll try to put a marker here for you too this is the actual screen of the intake um, and so that's where when you open the valve the water is going to flow through this would be the screen that we would actually get stuck to in the event that we were down there and Delta P got a hold of us um, but yeah we're basically just measuring the front here just to see uh, how deep it is um, just so that we know how much camera wire basically to let down as well with our camera and as i stated earlier basically we are inspecting this dam because they have started flowing water through it but something is preventing them from closing off the intake so um where my father that's my father there that's actually measuring this side where he's standing is basically a turn wheel and that turns an internal valve system that opens up the intake to allow the water to flow through um and as they went to shut it, as the, the company that owns the dam here, as they went to shut it, it would not shut for them. Uh, so, you know, their thought process is, well, is something broke? Is there debris? You know, what's preventing the, um, the gate, if you will, or the intake from closing up? So that's all we're doing here is just measuring so that we know how much uh, camera wire we need to let down with the camera and to get a general idea also of exactly where that intake is. Um, you can't really tell from where we're standing, but I'm probably 10, 10 feet or so from my dad and another 10 to 15 feet behind me on across the dam is where the actual uh, outflow is. So the water goes down through the dam, it makes a left-hand 90-degree turn, and it shoots out into that channel that you saw uh, earlier when we were measuring the lower side. But now that we've got our generalized measurements here, we are going to go ahead and lower a camera down into the water directly in front of the intake. And you're gonna see very quickly how fast this water is moving through. You're gonna see the turbidity come through very fast. Um, and you're, you're even gonna hear on camera where we talk about, hey, it's pulling the camera into the intake. We can feel that pull as well. Um, the visibility, ironically, was not as bad as we thought it would be um, because you can see all the turbidity there on top of the water. But once you got down through that, it was actually relatively clear. But you're gonna see really quick, you're gonna see a ton of debris, you're gonna see a couple of trees, you're gonna see a lot of turbidity go by the camera. Um, but you'll also see, more importantly, why we chose 
not to put a diver in the water to do this uh, investigation or this um, inspection here. And we chose to go the safe route simply by dropping a camera down to see what it is so that we don't endanger one of us. All right, so now it's time to lower the camera. Uh, we actually use an AquaView camera. Uh, we use it for search and recovery uh, operations. We use it for body recoveries. We do it for investigations. And of course, we use it here in commercial diving. And if you don't know what AquaView is, it's a company that makes an underwater camera basically for fishermen. You can lower it down in there and you can see what you're looking at on sonar. Uh, we use it as well just as a live feed video sometimes. When we send divers down, they can actually take the camera with it. We can mount it to our full face mask. We can mount it to our helmets. Uh, we can just carry it or mount it you know, on a hand mount. And that way our surface crew can actually see what we're seeing as well. And it's a pretty decent system. It is kind of black and white. Um, but I'll show you a side view image here in a minute and you'll get to see what I'm seeing as I'm looking through the viewer. But we're basically just going to be lowering it down in front of the intake. And once again, what we're looking for is debris. We're looking to see if there's um, damage to the screen. We're looking, you know, whatever we can find to try to figure out why they can't close this system off. But here you'll kind of see what I'm, I'm looking through the viewer. And unfortunately, the, the camera, not the AquaView camera, but the camera I'm using to film here is not really doing it justice. I've actually got a pretty good image uh, from my perspective like I said the camera's not picking up the same way that I am uh, it is an infrared camera too it does have a built-in light but we just use a standard dive light we zip tie it to it and we find that 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 actually works a little bit better than the internal uh, light that's on the camera but here you can see the debris at the surface and then as we lower the camera down we're going to try to get it right in front of the intake and you'll even hear dad say hey it's you know it's getting pulled in and it's not actually getting pulled into the intake it's there in front of the screen so that wire is there getting sucked up in uh, against the screen there but there was a little bit of debris and then here in just a second we're going to come across a large tree and don't worry if you can't see it on camera because i'm going to show the video of when this dam was drained or this lake was drained once again and you will see all the trees that have washed up against this and all the debris matter that's washed yeah, up against it. So yeah, here in a minute, it's, it's uh, as he kind of pans everywhere. the camera around, you are going right. to see can you twist it to those the trees that are actually blocking that intake. Now yeah, our initial thoughts here was that is what's preventing the twisted. valve from closing it. However, what we come to determine was the, the screen is actually wall, still intact, wall. which means there's no debris right, getting past debris the screen the uh, and blocking that valve system. And towards the end of this video, I'll, yeah, I'll kind of explain what is actually wrong here and what needs to be fixed and how it's going to get fixed. Uh, but just from a, our initial thoughts, well, there's trees here on camera. We can see the trees. They're directly in front of the intake. And our fear was the screens were broke. The trees got inside those screens. And, of course, it was preventing that valve uh, from being shut. But, like I said, it ended up not being that. But, yeah, there you can kind of see the tree on camera there. Um, and you can't. Once again, the camera that I'm using to film here, it's not doing it a lot of justice to to show the screen and everything like that. If you see it in person, it's a much clearer image. Um, we do have a way to record uh, this footage. We we have um, we have a. Oh, what's it called a video out plug-in on the camera and I could have got some footage for you unfortunately I didn't have the the digital recorder that I used for that on this day so my my cell phone had to work for a camera there but um yeah now that we've kind of determined there is debris there we're going to try to formulate a game plan to get that debris out of there because once again we can't shut the valve we will not we absolutely refuse to send divers in this is going to be way too dangerous to send anyone in there underwater we can do something from the surface but we're not going to be able to do it underwater so we're we're trying to um, get a game plan here of how we're going to handle this situation and let the 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 business here know hey this is what we think it is let's develop a game plan and let's continue to do a little bit more research and we're going to drop the camera a couple more times down in there we're actually going to go out on a boat and do the exact same thing so we're going to pull a boat over drop the camera down in there and uh, see what we can figure out. You Here we can kind of determine that there are two rather large trees 
um, that are still protruding out of the surface, which we feel pretty <laughs> confident that's you know, what we're no looking at on camera is the ones like. that are protruding out of the surface. And they're up underneath the catwalk yeah. of the dam, so we can't mm -hmm. really see them without leaning over. Sure. And I do want to make a, a quick right. note here. If you notice, my entire crew has PFDs on or personal flotation devices. Uh, this is one of the ways that we stay safe. This is one of the things that our insurance company uh, requires, which at the end of the video, I'm going to talk about proper insurance and proper training, proper certifications and license to do all this. So stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about how you can get into this as well. Um, but yeah, we keep our guys 100% safe. We're never going to ask them to do anything that we're not willing to do or anything that's going to put their lives uh, at risk. But here you can see we dropped the camera back. You can see a lot of debris here at the surface again. And then, of course, we're going to come right back across one of those trees again. And what we're looking at is to see if we can dislodge it by hand or if we need to put some type of rope system on it and try to pull it up. And we want to see if it's actually wedged because at this point, we still think that's what's keeping the valve open. All right, so we've changed up gears now. Uh, the two individuals you see here, they are actually not part of our crew. They're part of the golf course crew. Uh, they, they're they using one of their vessels to get closer to the intake safely, obviously. They got their PFDs on. But we've allowed them to take our AquaView camera because they can get it lower and get it positioned exactly where they need it versus us trying to do it from the catwalk. And what they're trying to do here is dislodge some of those logs or those trees that we talked about earlier that we actually saw on camera. And they're wanting to see if possibly they can dislodge them, pull them up, and maybe even get a better view of the intake screen itself to see if it's damaged. Um, but as you can see, they're going to be struggling here. They're they're not going to be successful in removing these trees and like i said i do want to show you um what this looks like yet again uh when it's drained you're going to see all the debris if you look here see all the different trees uh look look at the metal frame at the bottom that's some type of metal railing that's washed up against the dam there's just so much debris around here and this is the screen here i'll kind of mark it for you this is the screen that i was talking about earlier as well that we're worried that could be damaged uh which we're they're actually not seeing that on camera from their angle so uh, that's not a major concern at this point the, the biggest concern is is can they get Get this debris out of here and unfortunately they're not going to be able to do it but pay close attention to the bar that uh the gentleman there had his arm on there the other gentleman grabbed a hold of the bar notice at the bottom how it's crooked and if i was to pan up here you would see it's actually bent the shaft is bent all the way up to the turn wheel on the catwalk and this is the actual opening mechanism that opens and closes the valve that's inside the intake itself and what we were able to determine was that was the actual problem it wasn't the debris holding the intake system open it's actually that turnbuckle system there it's had so much debris pushed up underneath it that it's been it it's warped it and unfortunately it is rendered useless at this point it's actually going to have to be replaced before they can shut this system down which in short that means they're going to have to drain the whole lake to fix it all right guys let me close out the video uh talking about our team a little bit how we got started in this industry and some of the requirements that we have to go through and i'll give you some pointers because i get people all the time say hey I want to do what you do. How do I get into this? What scuba certifications do I need? Which is one of the biggest misconceptions is this is so outside the scope of recreational and even technical scuba diving. What we do is truly commercialized diving. And there's, there's a large umbrella when we use the term commercialized diving. A lot of people think commercialized diving is your hard hat divers, they got the big heavy boots on and they're getting air pumped down to it. And yes, that is commercial diving, but there is a broad spectrum of commercialized diving. Basically, commercialized diving in short is professional diving done as a trade that requires insurance. And that is the short but sweet definition to it. And like I said, there's a broad spectrum here. Yes, there are hard hat divers. Yes, there are divers that go through intakes like we do that are not on open circuit. Uh, everything that we do is open circuit scuba. Whether it's recreational, technical, public safety, it's open circuit. We do not use surface supplied air. And the jobs that are outside of our level of training or what our insurance will allow us to do, we refer to other companies by all means. But... 
I want you guys to take this away from this video. You are not going to get this training in the recreational scuba industry. You're not going to get this training in the technical industry, and you're really not going to get any of this training in the public safety side of the scuba industry as well, which we're also a part of. You guys know we are a private public safety dive team, uh, which leads me into the next part of this conversation. Um, the reason you see us do things that your local fire department divers or your local police department divers cannot do is because of a little thing called NFPA standards. And NFPA standards is what controls dive teams in, say, that government ENT, if you will. They're the ones that set guidelines that they cannot go above and beyond. And since we're private, those NFPA standards simply do not apply to us. Now, yes, we are still required to follow all OSHA regulations, but NFPA standards don't apply to a private team or a, say a private public safety dive team like it would to say a fire department, a rescue squad, or a police department or something of that sort. So we're even outside that scope as well. Even though we do contract public safety work, we're outside the scope of what your local team is going to do. So let's talk a little bit now about the background of my guys and what training we've got and our um, kind of the way we do things. Uh, every single one of my guys that's on either our public safety team, our salvage team, or our commercial team, and it's all the same guys. We just have different titles, if you will, depending on what we've been hired to do for the day. Um, we all come from either a military background or a public servant background. Uh, myself, I was police fire and EMS. I've got another uh, retired state trooper that was also in the military that's on our team. The rest of the guys are all either firefighter or rescue personnel. Um, and the military personnel that's on our staff as well, they come from an engineering background. So you can see it's not just we went out and did training. We come from a wide background of different industries, uh, different ENTs, different type branches of the government. And we've got those that training from that that allows us to do this as well. My co-owner, my, my father, uh, he was a commercial contractor by trade. So he has that understanding of how things are built. He works hand in hand with the engineer that's here with us, uh, the, the military engineer. So we work together great as a team. We are a well-oiled, fine working machine that comes together as a as a team, as, as a one unit to uh, make sure not only are we being safe, but we can do these jobs efficiently as well. And so that's kind of our background here. Um, how do you get started in doing something like this? Uh, the biggest piece of advice that I will give you is don't just jump right into it. Please make sure you are seeking out proper training, whether it's that recreational training, whether it's the technical, the public safety, the commercial training at some big dive school, or whether it's through military, Make sure you are taking your time and getting properly trained and also make sure you know your limits. Just because you are trained to do something does not mean that you can do it safely. Uh, and, and that goes from the, the beginning spectrum of the scuba industry to the very end of it. Just because you're trained, just because you got a little card, just because you got a certificate or a degree does not necessarily mean that you can do it at all times. There's going to be times when you can't do. And we have a very strict policy here that our guys obey, just like you saw in the video. We don't go anywhere near the water's edge without some type of PFD on. That's just our policy here, and it's to keep our guys safe. Every single one of my guys are dive professionals. They're dive masters. They're instructors. Uh, they're prof they were professional swimmers at college. I mean, it's something that we're good at, but we don't risk it when it comes to our lives. We're always going to be safe. So we have a very strict policy and procedure manual that we abide by too. Number two, make sure that not only do you have the proper training, make sure you got the proper insurance to do this. And you're going to have to shop around. I'm not going to go into de detail about our insurance company here because it's not going to apply to you in a different geographical location. And if you're out of country, you may not have the same insurance requirements that we do. You know, we have to have general liability here on our facility. We have to have uh, general liability on our crew. We have to have professional liability as dive professionals. We have to have workman's comp on every single one of our employees as well. And that workman's comp is different depending on what their job is. So it's different if they work behind the register, if they're teaching scuba, if they are running trips for us, if they are part of our, say, salvage public safety slash commercial team. It's different per unit that we have here at Lake Hickory Scuba Center. So it's it's 
something that you're just going to have to do your research on, I would strongly encourage you to reach out to other pre-existing teams and see what they have to go through. Uh, see what insurance requirements they have. Be very weary of watching videos here on social media, especially YouTube. There are tons of private teams that go out and they bring cars up and they do this and they do that and they are not properly trained. They, In short, they have an open water cert, maybe a dry suit, maybe a full face mask cert, and that's all they've got. They're not properly trained to be doing what they're doing. I'm not going to diss them and say they're they're not doing a good job. I think what they're doing is great, but I think they are truly walking liabilities. Um, and I'm not going to risk my guys for internet views. I'm just not going to do it. They, their lives mean more to me than our viewership here on YouTube, and I'm just not going to risk it. So my guys will be trained. We have a very strict training regimen. Um, we put our guys through training every single week. Yes, every single week. These guys, some of them have full-time jobs. Some of them are full-time instructors for us. Some of them just do salvage work. Some of them are fully retired, say out of the military, but they still come in they train every single week. And we make sure that they stay up to date on that training as well. We make them get physicals every single year, as do the dive professionals that work for us. And primarily, that's the, the same guys. But they have to get physicals. They have to get medicals filled out. And a lot of that will cross over. So if they do their medical, say, as a dive master instructor, that counts as the medical that we require as well. Um, but yeah, we keep our guys safe, and I would encourage you to keep it safe too. Um, I do want to end really quick. A good way to get involved in something like this, if you happen to be fortunate enough to live in an area where there's companies like Compass Marine, Towboat US, or uh, even Seato, Get up with those guys. See if they got positions that are available and you can get into some of the same recoveries and salvage operations that we do simply by working with those guys and they do in-house training as well. They are completely insured um, and it will get your foot in the door. It's a great easy way to get your foot in the door and then once you get experience, then you can kind of branch off and kind of do your own thing as well. But once again, guys, be safe. Make sure you're properly trained, have the proper insurance to do this, and you can have a very fruitful career doing what we, we do. Even if you got to seek out commercialized training through a college system or through some commercial uh, dive training agency or whatnot, then seek it out. We all had to get properly trained to do this, and you're going to have to do the same thing. Don't go out here and just willy-nilly it. Don't try to be the next big YouTube star and pull up cars from boat ramps and things like that without being properly trained. Because so what? You might get a couple million views. You might make a couple thousand dollars here on YouTube. And then it only takes that one time for you to get in above your head and you won't have no more videos to show anybody. So please be safe when you're doing this. Because I know this is a longer format video. We don't usually do videos this long, but if you like it, give me a big thumbs up. Definitely let me know down in the comment section what you thought about the video. If you got any questions on what you saw on the screen today, drop me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can, as quick as I can as well. Because I thoroughly appreciate each and every one of you for watching our videos. I hope our videos are very educational for you. I hope it opens your eyes that there is a lot more to the scuba industry than just learning how to breathe underwater or to perfect your buoyancy or learning how to go deeper depths or getting tech certified. There's a whole lot more to this industry and there's a lot more to this industry that you can be very fruitful at and you can make some good money down the road as well. But guys, if you liked the video, big thumbs up. Definitely share it for me. If you've got any questions, drop me a comment down below. But that's going to do it for today, guys. Until our next video, take care, God bless, and I'll see you in the next one.